Okay, well, it's 12.05, so I would like to welcome all of you to our 20 Mile Complete Streets project presentation. Uh, this is a, this is a multi-million dollar uh, design improvements that we are uh, trying to accomplish and to do within along the 20 mile. The limits of the 20 mile uh, for now are from Dearborn to Dearborn to Dorothy, all of them along the Tweedy, Tweedy Boulevard. What we have here for you is we would like to present you a concept that we have established uh, and we would like to introduce it to you, get comments from the business owners and the community uh, to get your, to make sure that we address all the concerns that you potentially might have uh, and we get feedback from the community. So with that, um, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Jose Loera. I'm the city traffic engineer for the city of Southgate. And I'm also acting as the project manager for the for this project, for the 20 mile project. With me, I have Mr. Giuseppe Casanorti from AOA Corporation. He is the principal engineer and the designer for this project. So the meeting basically is to introduce uh, the 20 mile the issues that we know, that we all know we have along 20 Boulevard, to present to you the concept and gather input from the community and then to gather input uh, you know, as we move forward in finalizing the design. As most of you know, you know, Tweedy Boulevard uh, is a major arterial with regional significance to the community. It also serves as our business district for the city of Southgate. It serves several businesses and schools throughout the boulevard. Tweedy Boulevard currently carries approximately 24,000 vehicles per day. So it's heavily traveled. Uh, some of the challenges that we know that we have encountered is along Tweedy Boulevard, we have a number of uncontrolled crosswalks where we have uh, 40 to 45 pedestrians that are crossed on a daily basis. And these are some of the, they present some of the traffic issues and challenges for people to safely cross Tweedy Boulevard. So we have taken that into account and we are going to present to you some of the traffic calming issues that we would like to present that we could improve the safety, not only for vehicles, but also for the pedestrians as they walk throughout the boulevard. Um, so we'll address some of the safety issues that we have encountered. Also, uh, Tweedy Boulevard uh, has a lot of infrastructure that is very old. So we'll be addressing some of that infrastructure as part of this project, and also be able to provide some back connectivity uh, between the Tweedy Boulevard and the LA River. So some of the improvements that we are proposing is for pedestrian safety, we'll be addressing all the deficiencies that we have throughout the boulevard when it comes to sidewalk repairs. If we have any tripping hazards or panels that need to be addressed, the, this project will, will take care of those improvements. Also, all the wheelchair ramps that we have throughout the project limits will be per the current ADH standards. Uh, in some um, circumstances, or so some intersections, you know, we have uh, we have constraints because of the right of way. Uh, so some of the ramps will be substandard, but it's still trying to comply with ADH accessibility. We'll be doing also some curb extensions to improve the high and also high visibility crosswalks just to improve the safety for our pedestrians. Bike access, like I said, we're gonna provide with some sharrows, some bike, bike, bike signage and bike racks. Uh, most of this bike racks and, uh, will be adjacent or near um, bus stops. So to make it uh, more convenient for bike riders. Regarding traffic volume, we're gonna address some traffic measures uh, that is part of the curb extensions, mid block, mid block blow, uh, bulb bouts and enhancing signage throughout the boulevard. One of the main concepts is that we want to uh, advertise and promote all the uh, city parking lots that we have on the both the north end and the south end on Tweedy Boulevard by placing wayfinding signs and promote all the available parking that we have throughout the Tweedy Mile project. Regarding uh, the deferred maintenance, as most of you know, uh, the pavement of the road along Tweedy Boulevard is in really poor condition. So this project will address uh, and rehabilitate 
the pavement of the road within the project limits. And with that, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Giuseppe Casanote, who will walk us through the um, the concept design for the 20 mile. So Giuseppe. Thank you, Jose. Uh, so I, what I'm gonna be showing you is just more uh, visuals of a lot of the stuff that Jose has been, uh, was talking about it in the last slide. Um, what you see here is just a, a typical concept of, of a few blocks of, of Tweedy Boulevard. Uh, a lot of the uh, improvements um, just repeat themselves and are, are pretty consistent throughout the, uh, throughout the Tweedy Boulevard corridor. Um, again, I'll repeat that you know, the project um, is, is along Tweedy between Dearborn and Dorothy. And you know, as we go, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll move from left to right on the screen. And so on, on, on the left hand side, you can see there are a couple locations where we're gonna be putting parklets, which is gonna have some uh, uh, benches, uh, some enhanced landscaping. And you know, the, the parklet locations uh, more specifically um, are gonna be located uh, between San Antonio Avenue and San Carlos Avenue at a mid block there. And another set of parklets that's going to be um, rehabilitated and expanded is going to be between San Miguel Avenue and San, San Vicente Avenue. Um, there are existing parklets at all those locations. Uh, we are expanding the length of them and uh, uh, putting all brand new landscaping, which we'll, we'll, we, have, we have some slides there with uh, that'll show you what's, what's going in there. Um, as we... Uh, move along to the right here. Um, this is just a, a typical unsignalized intersection. Um, this this one here is actually specifically San Vicente, uh, where we're actually where we're adding a uh, curb extension or a bulb out, as some people uh, refer to it, on the uh, uh, on on the corner there. What the bulb outs are going to do are shorten the pedestrian crossings. Um, and and increase visibility for pedestrians crossing these streets. Uh, one thing that you notice is is that um, at uh, actually at all these unsignalized intersections, we've actually removed one of the pedestrian crossings. Uh, and the reason for that is so that we can focus the we can focus pedestrians to one crosswalk, um, and th that way vehicles also can just focus on one crosswalk. Um, and that, in it, and especially in, in certain cases, we have not only the high visibility crosswalk, but we're also putting in rectangular, rectangular rapid flashing beacons um, that will be pedestrian activated. And uh, again, just so that vehicles can focus on one crosswalk and we, min we minimize the conflict points within the intersection. And as you go to the very right of the screen, you have, uh, this is the intersection of Tweedy and Mallison. And again, we're on, on the, uh, to be the northwest and southwest corners there were, were putting in some curb extensions or, or bulb ups. Uh, um, in addition, uh, we're gonna be enhancing, uh, restriping the entire uh, roadway within the project limits. Uh, we will also be doing pavement rehabilitation um, through uh, within the project limits. Um, uh, as Jose's mentioned, we're gonna be doing some isolated sidewalk repairs where we've found some, some broken and uplifted sidewalks, uh, upgrading, the, all the curb ramps on the corridors. Um, we will be striping sharrows um, along the corridor. Um, you see those actually on your screen here where Jose's pointing. Sharrows, uh, bike signage, bike racks uh, to, to improve bike access. And I think that's, that's, about, that's about it. So let's go ahead and go to the next, uh, the next slide, Jose. So this is just a, a blow up of just one of the intersections. Uh, more specifically, this is actually at San Luis. Uh, this is one of the intersections that uh, was noted to um, install rectang rectangular, rap rectangular rapid flashing beacons. That's a mouthful there. Um, also known as RRFBs. Uh, so you, know, you can see that on the uh, northeast and southeast corners, we were installing curb extensions. Uh, we're shortening the pedestrian crossing. We are removing the pedestrian crossing on the west side of the street. We're focusing all the attention on one crossing. And uh, where, where we can provide them, we are trying to provide uh, uh, two curb ramps at each corner. 
uh, we were faced with a lot of challenges with constraints, um, whether it was drainage constraints or physical um, right-of-way constraints. Um, and so in most cases, we have one curb ramp. Um, so that this would be a uh, just a, a, a typical intersection here. Um, the only difference that you'd probably see with other intersections is that some of them have the RRFDs and some of them, uh, some of them don't. Uh, next slide. So as far as the landscaping, uh, this is actually just a typical, um, it, right in the middle of your screen is just a typical concept of uh, one of the parklets and uh, around all that, you'll around all that you'll see all the uh, various things that are going on here. So, and we'll, we'll we have another slide here that zooms in on that. But uh, some uh, adding in trees, uh, benches, um, uh, some decorative concrete, uh, bike racks, trash receptacles, and uh, there's other some other miscellaneous landscaping in there. Um, at the at the bottom of your screen, at the curb extensions, you know where we had the appropriate amount of room, um, we are gonna be providing um, some landscaping, some um, uh, lower landscaping, no, no trees in, in, those, in those areas. Uh, but you know, where we do have the room, we will be providing that. Uh, next slide. Uh, so here on this slide is actually um, uh, some, some snippets from the Tweedy Mile specific plan. Um, the, the basis for all the, for, Really, the basis for this project was the Tweedy Mile specific plan, including all the landscaping, the choices of the plants and trees, uh, the uh, the furniture, the trash receptacles. Um, that that is the basis for this project. Uh, so these are just a couple renderings that we took from the Tweedy Mile specific plan. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this. At, uh, on this slide here, this is uh, various different types of uh, plants and trees uh, per the that were uh, uh, in the Tweedy Mile specific plan that were identified to be used on this project. Uh, this what we're showing here on the screen um, is actually the uh, the yellow color uh, uh, palette. Uh, the Tweedy Mile specific plan does have um, some additional uh, color palettes that um, will be used on the project as well. Um, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, plant names that I don't think any of us can really uh, can really pronounce here, but I uh, just want to give you guys a visual of what uh, of what you can expect to see out there. Next slide. Uh, so as far as the pedestrian amenities, we have uh, th this is what you can expect to see out there. Um, any of the furniture is going to be steel furniture. Uh, uh, whether it's the trash receptacles, the bike racks, bus shelters, benches. Uh, I will note that the benches uh, will be including a center uh, armrest. Uh, reason for that is that we do wanna prevent any homeless from sleeping on these benches and uh, on, on the benches that are in the parklets or even in the new bus shelters. And then also in the bottom left there, you can see um, just an example of the, the scored uh, decorative pavement that um, that we're looking at putting it in the parklet locations. And again, this is, I repeat, this is all from the, the, the Tweedy Mile specific plan that was, uh, that, that was approved by the city council. And with that, uh, let me, Jose, unless you have anything else to, to add that I might've missed, um, I'll go ahead and hand it back to you. No, again, thank you, Giuseppe. So, how do we arrive to this design concept? So basically, like uh, Giuseppe has indicated, we uh, we retained the services of a consultant to prepare the 20 mile specific plan in 2008, 2018. So once uh, we had the consultant on board, uh, there was quite an extensive outreach program that was done by the community to get input from the business owners and get a buyout on the on a specific concept. So a concept was developed, a concept was presented and approved by the community and by our city council. Once the concept was approved, basically now it was uh, an opportunity for the city to solicit and apply for state and federal grants to be able to do this, uh, this type of improvements as being presented. There was a need for to do these improvements. So 
we were lucky that in 2018, we applied for a, an active transportation program grant, which we received uh, in 2019. So based on that, we were able to retain the services of a consultant, KOA, to start working on a design concept. And this is where we are today. So as far as public communications, like I said, uh, I am the city traffic engineer and the point of contact for any questions or concerns that you might have regarding the project. Uh, during the design phase, you know, like I said, we're doing uh, information mailers that were distributed to all the business owners along the 20 mile. Uh, this is one of three outreach meetings. Uh, we're gonna have a second outreach meeting via hybrid in the month of September. And then also we reach out to the Chamber of Commerce. It is my understanding that uh, every Saturday they have an event breakfast with some of the business owners along the Twitty Boulevard, which will be uh, doing another presentation uh, at the Chamber of Commerce. The date hasn't been set yet. So we're working with the Chamber to come up with a specific date. Regarding the hybrid also, it will be most likely the third week of September when we'll have that meeting. Uh, distribution of flyers and invitations will be giving out to all the business owners again if they wish to participate. Basically, it will be the same, the same presentation that we are presenting here to you today. During the construction phase of the project, uh, there will be construction notices. Uh, we will establish uh, there will be a link associated to the city's website where you can uh, look at the, uh, the different milestones during the construction phase. Uh, there'll be uh, construction alerts when, for example, if a lane or section of the road will need to be closed, uh, ample uh, opportunity will be presented to the residents and business owners to let them know of those alerts that will take place. There'll be construction notices that will go out uh, two weeks prior to any work taking place, two days before. And also we'll have also changeable message boards two weeks before we break, we break ground on this project. Uh, the message boards will be placed along Tweedy Boulevard on both the north and the east and west end of the streets. And then also on all the major arterials such as California, Otis, um, Alexander and such to let them know that, you know, that there's gonna be construction activity in those areas. Uh, we are also gonna create a project website so again, to try to uh, get the community involved and address any of the uh, concerns that the residents and business owners might have. So the project is fully funded. Like I said, we, uh, we have right now a design concept that is being done by KOA. The project, uh, the construction phase is, is funded through the active transportation grant that we receive. Uh, we're happy to announce that you know there's no money from the general fund for this particular project. The design, the concept design, we're trying to find uh, to find, to move forward with the concept design within the budget that is being allocated for this project. So this is where we are today. So you know the 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 design is started on the spring of 2022. We're coming to you with a concept. Uh, and we're trying to finalize the, the design by late spring 2024. We anticipate construction in the fall of uh, 2024. Uh, this, because it is federally funded, will require uh, an approval to move to, to the construction phase by Caltrans. But we anticipate that the project will be completed on the summer of 2025. So with that, that concludes our presentation. So, you know, the floor is open for any questions or comments from the community and business owners. Jose, we have a question in the chat from Jose. Will there be two lanes going west and two lanes going east? Yes. So basically the road geometry that exists there will remain as is. So there'll be two lanes in each direction, uh, two for eastbound and westbound. So the number of lanes will not will not change. Attendees, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask questions, or you could write them down in the chat. Uh, th this is Jose. Um, question on the uh, bench designs and furniture. Will 
the furniture be uh, cohesive across the entire proposed project area, or is there going to be um, you know new benches mixed with old benches and you know old fixtures? No, the intent and Giuseppe, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, basically, all existing trash receptacles and benches, all within the twenty mile, all of them will be new. Yeah, the where you're going to have a little bit of old and new is that you know they're you know due to uh, budgetary constraints, you know we we can't rehabilitate all of the existing parklets that that do have um, uh, uh, currently. I think believe they have the uh, concrete furniture. Um, currently, a, a lot of that or most of that there um, is not uh, being touched by this project. Um, where we're including new benches is just that uh, there's a couple bus shelters that are being installed, and there's also um, at at the four new at the four uh, rehabilitated parklets that I mentioned in the presentation that um, is going to get new new benches. So I'm hearing there will be the old ones and the the existing ones will remain, and it's only where new uh, construction or new design. Uh, that's where we're going to get the new benches? No. So basically, you know, th there's some parklets right now that have concrete benches. Yep. So those concrete benches will, will remain. But where we have uh, benches at bus stops and at different locations, and where we have trash receptacles, all those will be replaced. Next question on the uh, crosswalks, the, uh, you know, littered crosswalks. I didn't see on the... Um, yeah, was is there a plan to have one on Malison as well? That goes right into um, the shopping center for Northgate and Little Caesars. I know that there's been um, uh, incidents in the past there, and that's an area of high, very high concern for the residents. So, you know, can you touch on whether there'll be a little crosswalk there? Yeah, so basically what we're going to do in area, so, so what we did a, a traffic study where we identified and took counts of where it put it, or, or intersections, for example, like at San Luis, and we did this uh, analysis on all the uncontrolled crosswalks within the project limits. So we took into account, for example, where is the most, what side do most uh, pedestrians actually cross? And what will be the most beneficial and provide better access to the different businesses as the people are crossing. So we did, we took that into account. Uh, so we are basically uh, placing the, the crosswalk where the heaviest volume uh, exists. So we're trying to maintain that access vis uh, visibility throughout the boulevard. Another um, item. I'd, oh, I'd, I'd just like to add that as far as the, um, the I, I believe you're asking about the the crosswalks receiving the rectangular flashing, the re rapid rectangular right. uh, flashing beacon systems. Right. Um, those will be at the intersections of uh, Elizabeth, San Gabriel, San Luis, and uh, Dorothy. Uh, those those locations um, were um, all chosen at the time that the the grant was uh, applied for back in 2018, uh, and th that study. Uh, the study for those specific locations was actually done by another consultant. You, you mentioned Elizabeth, San Luis, Dorothy. Uh, can you repeat the other ones? Uh, Elizabeth, uh, San Gabriel, San Luis, and Dorothy. Okay, thanks. And now the uh, the final one. I'll let you know everyone else uh, you know speak as well. The um, the tree lighting. Uh, you know, there's um, you know, it's an eyesore, right? The cross the Tweety mile uh, you know the trees look great with with lights but the dangling um or uh, dangling uh, cables that are going from tree to tree is there a thought while we're uh, replacing and repaving uh tweety boulevards or thought to uh, run conduit so we could have these trees lit it from the base up versus you know the uh third world look that we have right now on tweety it'll be a shame if we beautify Tweety and we still have, you know, a nice or uh, present. So we received a grant that was specific, to, you know, to enhance not only the boulevard, but also to provide some uh, traffic calming devices and address some of the safety issues that we have. So the city also allocated money uh, to do the road rehabilitation within the project limits. 
So uh, currently, you know, we'll take that uh, comment into consideration, but uh, right now it is not part of the project. And so if additional funding was needed uh, to um, include additional features, you know, especially while we have the road open, um, what I'm hearing is that there's still an opportunity to have that presented and additional funding approved to include that in the project. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, if if money it gets allocated, you know, that will be, for example, an item that will be a non-participating item. Uh -huh. um, you know, again, uh, keep in mind that also the project has some constraints when it comes to funding. Uh, we have benchmarks and deadlines that we need to comply, um, you know, that we need to start construction. Uh, but there's, if, if, if administration wishes to add a, a component that is not participating, such as the conduit for uplighting of the trees, uh, that's something that we, we might be able to accommodate, but at this time, you know, it's not part of the project. Right, right. I think it's, you know, the perfect timing because it'll be a shame if we have to dig up the street again, uh, you know, five, 10 years later to then accommodate the street lighting or get rid of the street lighting completely uh, to uh, account for those dangling cables. But OK, I'll leave that as an open item for you guys to um, you know, take a look at. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments from? I got a question. Go ahead. Um, are you guys going to uh, explain a little bit more about the bike paths that uh, some that were mentioned? Uh, is that going to uh, restrict some um, vehicles from um, you know being able to move along freely, or is that uh, something that's going to be added to the space that's already there? So are you talking about the curb extensions, for example, on this exhibit? No, no, no. At the beginning, you had mentioned some bike paths, but it, they oh, never went so into further detail. basically what we're doing is we're not creating, because we have uh, restrictions from uh, the width of the road from curve to curve. What we're mm -hmm. proposing is bike shadows. So basically pavement markings where bicyclists will be able to share the road with vehicles. Oh, so but, they're just sharing the road. Yes, we're not we're not creating a designated bike lane for bicyclists. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments, questions? Feel free to unmute yourselves, please. Gladys, do we have any other comments from the chat? I don't see any. Again, uh -huh. uh, please I'll write your name, phone number, and contact information. Uh, we have at uh, this moment a Zoom user. Uh, if you could please uh, identify yourself. Like I said, we uh, will be having uh, two more outreach meetings. One of them will be a hybrid meeting, um, probably second, third week of September. It will be held at the council chambers, uh, you know, everybody will be invited to come in and also you'll be having the opportunity to, to do it via Zoom. So it will be in person and via Zoom. And also we're working with the chamber to host another event at the chamber. Uh, I believe that on Saturdays they have breakfast with the chambers. Uh, so that's something that maybe we wanna uh, take that opportunity and present the, the project with with the community. We have a new uh, caller that just joined us, calling user one. Do you have any questions for Jose or Giuseppe? So, um, like I said, if you have any other questions, please feel free to email me or call me. Uh, my email address is jjloera, spells jjloera at sogate.org. And your uh, 
and my cell phone, which will be the best way to contact me, it's area code 626-705-4305. Um, yeah, this information is, already, is also on the city's website. So we'll have it also as, a, as an event um, tool. So you could always, you know, give me a call if you have any other questions or concerns or send me an email. If there are no other questions, we would like to thank you for participating. Uh, we'll, we're taking notes and addressing any, any concerns that you might have. Uh, we'll reach out to administrations, let them know if there is, um, if there's a wish for uh, to make these improvements uh, or these additional uh, improvements, and uh, we will let you know. So again, we would like to thank you for your participation. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, thank, thank you. you.